Hello guys, this is Jonathan Munoz and today I want to talk to you about a trending topic in medicine these days which is readmissions. So this is important or it's going to be important for IMGs and people that are doing internships, observerships and for us to familiarize with uh, topics or the the common jargon or that's used here. So. When you do your, your observerships, your rotations, you will hear or you will come across this topic, which is readmissions. And what this means is that a patient that has been discharged from the inpatient service, from the hospital service, after being hospitalized for diabetes, hypertension, CVAs, sepsis, whatever, right? After being discharged, this patient returns to the hospital within 30 days. This is the, the time. Within 30 days, this patient coming back is considered a readmission. And why is this important for, for hospitals, for doctors? For hospitals, it's important because they get penalized. They get penalized by the medical insurances saying, uh, you didn't do your job, pay me back, or you get a, a penalty. So you get the penalty and no one likes penalties, right? No one likes you, someone else to take your money or the money that you, you're earning. So hospitals get a penalty. Doctors, doctors get something worse, which is uh, the, the feeling that you didn't really do a good job on helping this patient out. Once, sometimes you, sometimes that's the case, sometimes you're not helping patients uh, on the right way and uh, sometimes it's just that patients are very very sick and they end up coming so um, when these patients come back um, too soon let's say one week or two weeks post discharge you really have to look at what could have happened and many times is that there wasn't a coordination of care at this charge that was proper for example the, uh, the resident or the intern that was working with this patient didn't do a good discharge summary and didn't specify what was the treatment plan for this patient at discharge. So the receiving doctor in, in the outpatient arena didn't know what to do, didn't know who this patient needed to see at discharge or maybe he needed uh, an orthopedic consult but no one knew what to do so no one put this patient in touch with an orthopedic surgeon or this patient needed a follow-up on cultures that were taken in the hospital and needed to be followed up at discharge to see if this patient needed antibiotics or this patient was treated with I don't know for Clostridium difficile and didn't complete his medic his treatment course because the vancomycin liquid vancomycin was too expensive and no one was able to change it to a cover medication. So um, different things. One of them, as I'm saying, is that the resident or the intern didn't do a discharge summary that specified what this patient needed. The second is that no one talked to the outpatient primary care doctor to say, hey, I'm discharging your patient today. See him this week, please. This patient is really, really sick. and he still needs a lot of work. Or the resident or the intern failed to identify a need to a transition to a, a skilled nursing facility for more physical therapy, uh, occupational therapy, antibiotics, physical therapy. Or uh, this patient was really, really, really sick and even if you discharge him today, he was coming back and you fail to identify that this patient maybe needed to be on hospice care. So maybe is this patient uh, a patient that wants to avoid a hospitalization and wants to, to stay at home regardless of the seriousness of his disease. So many things could be causing a patient to be readmitted. And among others, and then now this comes to, to the patient himself 
not being able to take the medications, not being able to understand the, the, the treatment plan, like saying that you wanted for this patient to be on a, on a taper uh, schedule of prednisone for 10 days, and he said, ah, I don't understand what this doctor is saying. I just want to take prednisone for five days and stop cold turkey on day four. And or patients said, ah, I don't need this antibiotic. I'm not going to take it. Or, or it's a patient with CHF and went out and went to a barbecue party and he ate tons and tons of salt or he didn't take his Lasix twice a day because the night dose makes him urinate so much through the night that he is not able to sleep or didn't see his outpatient cardiologist on time for a follow-up so no one checked on his sodium levels, on his potassium levels, what he was on diuresis. Or for COPDers, he didn't get all his inhalers the way that he was supposed to be taking them. So many things, right? And it, this readmission thing, this readmission, the patient coming back, has become an issue that everyone wants to, to try to solve. However, it's not possible. Otherwise, we wouldn't be talking about this. So it is important. And now, now that you know what it's about, when the time comes that you do a rotation, when the time that comes that you do an interview for residency, have this knowledge in the back of your mind. Because when someone asks you, what are you really good at? What are your strengths? Your answer should contain this information in a way that makes me feel like you are ready to work for us. For example, saying, uh, my, my biggest strength is in discharge planning. I'm very good at making sure that at discharge my patient and his doctor know what is my plan so we can continue the recovery phase at home and ensure that he is properly treated. So with that, I'm understanding that you are going to call the doctors, you're going to do a discharge summary in time, you're going to make sure that everyone understood what your treatment plan is and that you're going to try to avoid a readmission. So it becomes, this knowledge becomes very important for you, very powerful for you. And you could even start doing in your country, you could start doing a little paper about the importance of a safe transition to home post-hospitalization in patients with COVID, in patients with diarrhea, in patients with UTI, just to, to do something. And it could be very useful for you, for, for, for your rotations, because during the observerships, interns, residents are going to be looking at you and looking at what you do and they're going to provide feedback to their attendees saying, oh, Munoz, he does a great job at discharging patients. He's really good at this. And they will remember, or this could be written in your letter of recommendation. And this will be a great asset to have for your letter of recommendation. And lastly, I think there will be more and more work over the next years on trying to finally identify what else can we do. So now that if we take care of the discharge planning of the doctor talking to other doctors, or maybe the electronic medical records being able to communicate with other electronic medical records because all of them don't communicate among each other, um, that could be one, and that's very hard to achieve. The second one will be uh, for for patients and families to work with a, a third person, a third party, which could be the home health agencies or the, the home health physical therapies that go to see patients at discharge when patients have refused to go to a nursing home. And the third one will be the nursing homes. How how would our nursing homes regulated on the, the, the job or the work that they do? So uh, keep this in the back of your mind. This is readmissions, a quick talk on readmissions and just to say that there, there is a lot of interest on readmission right now, and there will be more work done on readmission. So one poster that you can do is on readmissions. So until next time.